In Sweden, there have been riots for the last couple of days because a group of deluded right-wingers have decided that now is the perfect time for them to publicly burn the Qur'an. And here is the kicker. This is all being done with the backing of the police and the government under the guise of, you've heard it before, freedom of speech, a term that is restricted only for the Muslims. This Ramadan, I'm raising money for the orphans and the poor in Gambia. I'm doing it with my trusted spot charity started by a friend. It's grassroots and allows donors to go and visit. I've been twice. And here you can see the boreholes we collected for last year. Thanks to your generous donations. Link in the description. <laughs> this was done in a predominantly Muslim area to, let's face it, incite and provoke the Muslims there. And that's exactly what happened. The Guardian says about 100 youth were involved. BBC says 200 youth were involved. Regardless, the person responsible for breaking the Quran was injured. Oh yes, yes. And you need to hear this, Muslims. He got hit with a stone on his leg. <gasps> Officials say he may survive this ordeal, but his family and friends will be with him during this testing time. But you know, as they say, <laughs> nothing's written in stone. Lol. Enough jibber jabber. Let's look at the Swedish Penal Code, Chapter 16, Section 8. It says, expressing contempt for a religious group falls under guilty of agitation against a population group. Or, hits mot falskrop for the Swedish folks that are watching. And this can result in imprisonment for up to two years. Then we have something that goes on to the next level called gross agitation against a population group. Or, as the Swedes call it, grov hits mot falskrop. That's for my Swedish homies out there. Which is, offensive content was disseminated to a large number of people in a way that was liable to attract considerable attention. I'm not making this up, mate. You can see the penal code on your screen. Flame and Nora, mate. Now, when it comes to minorities like LGBT, Sweden is the leader in making sure they feel included. When it comes to anti-Semitism, they make it clear. Yeah, categorical, their stance against anti-Semitism. But when it comes to Muslims, even the law takes a backseat. And then we're hit with the same old nonsense of freedom of speech. But according to your own rules of freedom of speech, it doesn't apply here, yeah? Because this falls under hate speech and contempt. Now bearing all this in mind, I want you to understand a principle. Yeah, and that is that countries will align with any group as long as it is for their national interest and security. Let's take the example of Israel. Yeah, it's clear that they have aligned with far right groups, even those that are anti Semitic. We know, even in the UK, as documented by Mark Curtis, they have supported religious groups to remove unfavorable regimes. We saw this happen in Afghanistan where they supported the Mujahideen against Russia. We saw it happen in Egypt. They supported the Muslim Brotherhood against Gamal Abdel Nasser. We saw it happen in Indonesia where they supported Darul Islam against Sukarno. And we saw it happen in Iran where they supported the followers of Khomeini against Muhammad Mossadegh. And then if we move on to America, of course, <laughs> it's going to take the whole episode if I go through their countries. But William Bloom enumerates them to be at least 50 countries that have been interfered in, mostly democratically elected since World War II. Now, bearing all of this in mind, Russia warned Sweden not to join NATO. We also know Russia favors far right groups to destabilize certain countries. And we also know from past experience in Sweden that burning of the Quran results in things like this. So it's not far fetched to assume that Muslim sentiments are being used here to cause unrest in this country. And with global politics the way it is now, nothing is as it seems, especially with the world being on the brink of a nuclear war, countries will try absolutely 
anything. Some of you may be watching, but he still hasn't addressed what Muslims think about this. <laughs> well, as Muslims, we believe the Quran was revealed to the heart of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and that's how it was transmitted. It's an oral tradition, unlike Christianity and Judaism, which is a bookish tradition, and it relies on things being written down. In Islam, we have something called the chain of transmission. So burning of a book is not going to end our religion. But of course, we do feel inside, but most Muslims are sensible. Let's leave it there, guys. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.